Welcome, everybody, to the Winter Circle Sports Betting Channel. My name is Ross Benjamin, host of the Winter Circle Sports Betting Podcast. My regular guest, as always, Mr. Jesse Shule of gamblersworld.net and jessieshule.com and Sean Higgs of a picks and parleys.net free picks uh, winning free picks winning free picks.com and also gamblersworld.net and we're powered by gamblersworld.com and gamblersworld.net folks the dot com portion is all our videos in the dot net portion is where you'll find 10 of the finest handicappers in the country including all three of us and uh Sean uh I, congratulations yesterday you hit a 10 unit play which is uh we grade our plays on $100 per unit so if you follow that uh form um you made $1000 with Sean's pick and it was an easy winner on the Mets in Washington to go under 9 final score 2 to 1 congratulations buddy thanks needed a I need a big one and I've just been missing. You know how it is, guys. You're like, just you can't get over that little hill. You're like, I can't. Why can't I get over this thing? And finally, it was a, a need. I, I actually got a little worried. It was like 1-1 one, one in the eighth. And then all of a sudden, I see bases loaded. I'm like, I'm going to lose this. It's going to be 3-3. Three, three. It's going extra innings. And I thought it was over. I, I couldn't even. I, I checked the score this morning, believe it or not. Because it was 1-1 one, one in the delay. I'm like, I was fearing for the worst. Because that's the way my run has been the last uh, two yeah, weeks. But uh, it's, I'll, 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 I'll take the win. Yeah, you you need to get over that hump, like you said, where um, when you're on a bad roll, it just seems like every break that could go one way or the other goes against you. And when you're rolling, Jesse, uh, everything seems to fall your way in that regard. You win extra inning games. You you have a run line uh, favored, and and somebody hits a three run homer in the bottom of the inning to cover the run line. Uh, you know, circumstances like that. Agree or no? Certainly, uh, it, it's been a rough go for me the last few weeks. I know I'm not alone. I know there's been some uh, some bad results all the way around for a lot of guys in our business. Uh, and, you know, we have these uh, ups and downs, and uh, that's part of being a pro. you got to uh, know how to deal with that. The only, the only time it ever caused me to lose sleep was uh, that Super Bowl with the Patriots and the Falcons. That's oh, that's the man. only one that caused me to lose sleep. Yeah, well, understandably so. And uh, if you're not familiar with that, uh, that was the game that Atlanta had a 27 nothing lead in the second half, and they were, I believe, getting were, were they a plus? Or, it was about a pick'em game. Uh, I don't remember the exact point spread. Maybe Jesse does. And New England roared back and then won the game in overtime, uh, which was the biggest comeback in Super Bowl history. So. That certainly would cause a lot of people to, to lose some sleep. Anyway, talking about losing some sleep, I didn't get much last night, and uh, but it goes with the territory, and let's, uh, let's get right to the picks. Now, we're going to be covering team totals today, folks. So um, this is something, once again, like first five inning bets, team totals are something you really should pay attention to. Because there are days like yesterday when there's only four, five games on the board. Uh, the more options at your disposal, uh, the more chance you're going to be able to get uh, betting value or find betting value. And that goes with us, for us especially, um, when days like this. And these, the old days, we really didn't have the options to do these kind of things, but now we do. But anyway, uh, let's start with Jesse, and he's going to be looking – um at the Pittsburgh and Philadelphia game and uh right now Philadelphia's uh run total is four and a half and Pittsburgh's uh team total is three and a half so take it away Jesse well I'm going to look at the Phillies over the four and a half team total uh Philadelphia's been playing great they're uh they're sitting in a wild card spot now uh Pittsburgh is way back uh and really, if you take away their first 25, 30 games, uh, they've been really bad since then. Uh, this Pittsburgh team is probably looking to get rid of some of its veteran talent, make some moves. They're certainly not going to be a buyer at the trade deadline. Philly might be. Um, and the pitching matchup, we have Mitch Keller going for Pittsburgh. You know, not bad numbers this year, but uh, over the last five starts, one in three with a 5.90 ERA. And uh, he's been really roughed up by the Phillies. Uh, the Phillies are batting a combined 443 against him. Small sample size, just 61 at-bats. 
but Harper's four for six. Ria Multo, Ria Multo, Schwarber, <laughs> both five for eight. Uh, yeah, it, it just looks like a tough matchup for Keller. Runs into a hot, hot team, hot lineup that's given him trouble in the past. We'll take and it's nice weather too in Pittsburgh, uh, and it can be a hitter's park in the right, uh, right conditions. It's eighty-eight degrees today. We're going to go over four and a half for the Phillies team total. Can't disagree with that. You know, Mitch Keller from Pittsburgh, he uh, more or less aligns with the with the Pirates themselves, where they got off to a great start and then yep. uh, things not so good uh, in recent outings, and uh, it, it reflects. His ERA, actually, uh, that Jesse mentioned, is a bit deceiving uh, because if you look at his ERA over about his last 10 starts, uh, much higher than what his season uh, total shows. Uh, Anyway, Jesse likes the Philadelphia Phillies to go over four and a half against the Pittsburgh Pirates this evening. All right, Sean, uh, the L.A. Angels, the red hot L.A. Angels, with Lucas Giolito yeah. making his first start since the trade from the White Sox, what and he'll trade. be facing Toronto Toronto and Kevin Gausman, who's having a terrific year. Right now, the Angels, who've been scoring a ton of runs, are only three and a half as their team total, and Toronto's at four and a half. What do you got for us, Sean? Yeah, first of all, how about that Giolito deal for the Angels? Obviously, I, Otani, not going anywhere. Right, right, they're going to say, all right, we'll hold on to him. Let him hit his 65 homers here. But that's a good deal because this guy's locked in a contract for next year, too, I believe, for Giolito. So yeah. they offered Otani, say, $45 million, He leaves. The fans can't be mad. And then they got a, a nice young pitcher to fill his, his role in rotation. Excellent move by the Angels. And it's paid off, sweep it a doubleheader. I'm going to leave. I'm going to go over team total, though, for Toronto here. And as much as I love Giolito, I, and I do, I'm a Giolito backer. On the road, though, he's been terrible this year. Do I do think maybe change the scenery and getting out of Dodge over there and apparently he's getting divorced was weighing on him and maybe that was why he was so uh, uh, not just bad. I mean, he was good at home on the road. Whatever the case may be, I'm all for they get change of scenery getting away from bad situations. But, you know, he still has performed that much worse on the road than at home. I mean, he's, you know, a five-something ERA just bad at 280 batting average against his bad numbers. And you're off a double header. I just think that's any team off a double header. I'm not looking to to, to really buy on. Uh, so, also the bullpen. You just traded a, a bullpen guy, and I, I'm shocked that Lance Lynn and somebody else wasn't the first guy out of the out of town here, in Chicago. And the Jays, listen, they could hit, they could hit, and I'm for me, it's just I got Gilito on the road. I got them off a double header. I got the Jays at home. Good lineup. I thought this lineup would be Braves-esque. So it's a over four and a half. It's a minus 118. Let's go. Let's go, Jays. Get it done. You know, this is a team also kind of, as much as they've won, they haven't really gone on that kind of big win streak to uh, to separate themselves. You know, we've seen, we've seen the Red Sox go on a win streak. We've seen Tampa start hot. Orioles, nothing from, nothing from Toronto. They go three in a row, drop two, win two, lose one. Yeah, over. Just so, something to say. I just like the over. Bad bullpen and a doubleheader. Let's go, yep. Toronto. You're at home. Get it done. Yep. Otani throws a gem yesterday in the, the opener of that doubleheader. And uh, the first time the Angels bullpen really had a decent game, but he minimized the, the, the amount of time they had a pitch in that game with uh, going deep into that game. But uh, I'm even looking at the LA under three and a half here, Jesse. Uh, you know, it. Think about how many runs the the LA Angels have scored during this hot streak. And here they are with a total of three and a half. And Sean makes a good point. You got a team coming up, a doubleheader on the road yesterday, traveling to another city a day later. Um, And I like to use the lazy bats syndrome uh, theory when it comes to that. And also the fact that Kevin Galsman is a guy who's going to get you deep into games um, and has shown an ability to shut teams down this year. So uh, I, I would have a lean toward the Angels under three and a half because uh, if it looks too good to be true, it, it most times and not, it is. And that's how I look at this Angels total of three and a half based on all the runs they've been scoring lately. So my lean would be on the under three and a half with the Angels. Jesse? Yeah, doubleheader on getaway day. You got to go against the Angels. Uh, tough, tough spot for them here. 
And the Jays, yeah, like Sean said, they're due to go on a winning streak. So so I do like that Jays over. I don't disagree with the uh, Angels under the, the tired bats theory is something I subscribe to myself. Yeah, and real fast on that, Gaussman, Gaussman at home has a uh, .99 whip. So obviously he gets gets it done a lot. He's another guy with the crazy road splits. Everybody's – the home and away splits, man, they're just – you look at a lot of these guys, they're, wow, this year. Just really bad ones too, like seven on the road, two at home, five at home, two on the road, just – Yeah, and we covered this yesterday with uh, Chip and uh, Doug. Um, you know, the bottom line is you can't just look at overall numbers for the season – you have to look when it's a 162 game season, like it is in major league baseball, recent trends and home and away splits are something you cannot ignore. If you want to be a successful major league baseball better. All right, real quickly, because we're running short on time here. Um, Cincinnati at the Dodgers is my game. 10, 10 PM Eastern time tonight. Brandon Williamson is going to be making a start for the Cincinnati Reds. Um, Williamson, five starts on the road, a 495 ERA and only averaging four innings pitched per start uh, on the road. And the Reds bullpen, which talk about home and away splits, their bullpen ERA at home is under three, but on the road it's 450 and their whip is 147 as a staff on the road. That's not very good. Uh, Williamson, by the way, has made one start versus the Dodgers this year, at, and that was at, in Cincinnati. Uh, in five and two-thirds innings pitched, he allowed six earned runs, eight hits. Uh, out of those eight hits, three of them were home runs. And speaking of home runs, the Dodgers uh, at home have really shown, uh, put up some really good power numbers. 83 home runs in 48 home games. That's 1.73 per game. 1.25 is considered very good. They're at 1.73 at home. Um, the Dodgers over their last seven games have averaged just a shade under seven runs a game, 6.9 to be specific, and hitting 286 as a team, 375 team on base percentage, which is crazy good. And they've also hit 13 home runs over their last seven games. Three games they've against Cincinnati this year for the Dodgers, and they scored six runs or more on each occasion. I know that this is a high total, which is five and a half for the Dodgers, but I'm not going to let that scare me away. I'm going the L.A. Dodgers over five and a half in this contest against the uh, Cincinnati Reds. Jesse? Well, did you know the Cincinnati Reds are 20 and five against the spread in their last 25 games if you take them on the run line? Yeah. Yeah, so, it doesn't uh, shock me. So I, I, I kind of like the Reds as a dog, but uh, as far as your uh, team total over, you're making plenty of sense there as well. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, You know, you look at Cincinnati's team total in this game, it's only three and a half. And Bobby Miller, um, the Dodgers slated starter, his ERA is over five at home. So, uh, you know, it was a toss up on which way I wanted to go. I just got scared away because – I thought that was an extremely low total uh, for Cincinnati based on how they performed offensively uh, over the, in this good streak they've been on for about a month. And, uh, you know, again, it looked too good to be true to me, and that's the only way I, I, I went away from that. Anyway, Sean, uh, your thoughts quickly? I, well, I like the Dodgers pick up Ahmad Rosario, nice – Shortstop edition there. Like they, the talk was for Tim Anderson. They go out and, and steal Rosario, who's a nice young piece, and get Noah Syndergaard. What, what is Cleveland? I guess Cleveland's giving up on the season. Noah Syndergaard, that's who they're going for with, with Bieber on a deal. Uh, Didn't even I'm realize a, he was in the majors still. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you on the over there. Cincinnati, as much as, you know, they had a nice little run. Not that they're the Pirates. Maybe they got a little more talent than the Pirates, but I could see a, a losing streak and they give up runs like crazy. I'm with yeah. you on this uh, Dodger team total over. Why not? There you go. So you got three team totals, all of them over. Uh, Jesse likes Philadelphia over four and a half runs against Pittsburgh. Um, it's Toronto over four and a half runs against the LA Angels for Sean Higgs. And it's the Dodgers over five and a half runs uh, versus Cincinnati for yours truly, Ross Benjamin. Speaking of Rosario, did you know that's my real first name, guys? Was that yeah, really? Rosario, yep. And I have an Italian last name. Benjamin's actually my middle name. But uh, DBA is Ross Benjamin. So 
uh, Rosario, hence Ross. Anyway, now that we all know that, that was the most important fact that anybody brought up on the show. Jesse, uh, tell the folks uh, what you got going on at Gambler's World that net this weekend and uh maybe something you want to enlighten the folks on be, be beyond that well i'd stay away from my baseball if i was you guys until i heat up a little bit but uh i'll tell you my preseason nfl eight and two last year 13 and three that's 81 percent since 2020 and i looked at those numbers and two of those three losses came in the hall of fame game so I'm not putting out any premium picks on the Hall of Fame game. I just put out a free pick video. You can catch that on my YouTube channel. But you can get all my NFL preseason picks for 99 bucks at jessieshule.com. Uh, come see me at jessieshule.com. You'll be glad that you did. And don't forget, you can get Jesse's daily picks and uh, his three-day, seven-day, and 30-day subscription plans over at gamblersworld.net, where we guarantee – all single game, multi game daily packages, as well as all subscriptions of 30 days or less. If you don't make a profit according to our grading system, uh, then your account will be credited the exact amount of your purchase price. And you could use that any which way you like, whenever you want, with whatever handicapper you want. So if Jesse doesn't make a profit for you in a three day period uh, by chance, uh, you could take that money that uh, you, and get it credited to your account and use it on Sean, if you wish, or myself, or any other great handicapper at the site. Sean, tell us what you got going on, my friend. I'll have a little baseball today up on the site. So that's uh, that's posted, a little three-pack. We're talking preseason, right? Starting up in a, a week. We are a, a week away. I was 58% last year, preseason football. Not as great as Jesse, but I'll put some money in your pocket as well. And uh, that's it. Midday money, seven days a week. Twitter, Mr. Sean Higgs. Come check it out. Say hello. Win a free pick page. I loaded up um, a – who did I load up last night for college football? I think I did Conference USA last night loaded up on the site. So it's got five up there now. I'll be loading up the – I'm debating on Pac-12 or Sun Belt. What do you guys think today? Which I put up after the show. What Pack twelve, pack twelve, yeah. Pack twelve, there we go. Pack twelve, it is for everybody. Pack twelve will be loaded. You didn't know the yeah, Sun Belt was very it. good last year. You know, a very. I mean, comparatively uh, to years past, the Sun Belt was very good. So don't don't underscore them at all. And the Pack twelve right now in transition. Uh, teams can't wait to get the hell out of that conference. So uh, a lot to be considered there. Anyway, real quickly, you could find me at either my personal site rbwins.com or over at gamblersworld.net. I'm not going to bore you with all the details. You already heard them. Um, also, folks, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, which is the Winner's Circle Sports Betting Channel, uh, you'll if you're on a PC, you'll see that WC button in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Just click on that. You'll be subscribed. Uh, and, and if you watch or if you're watching on your mobile device, uh, you'll see a black subscribe button right underneath the video you're viewing. Just hit that, folks. It's absolutely free. There's no strings attached. There's no hidden agenda. Uh, they, and uh, why wouldn't you? You love sports betting, and uh, and why wouldn't you subscribe for nothing? Everybody likes something free. Uh, anyway, for J. 